talks on psychoanalysis, shares topics published in the IPA Society journals and Congress debates worldwide, brought to you in the voices of the original authors. We hope this window will allow you to experience the depth and breadth of psychoanalytic thought around the world. I am Gaetano Pellegrini and in this episode we listen to Christine Ancieux Premier on the construction of autoeroticism and the ability to fantasize the dream at the dawn of life. Christine Ancieux Premier is a PhD psychologist trained in Paris, an adult and child psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, member of the Société Psychanalytique de Paris. She moved from Paris to New York in the year 2000, where she has a private practice. She is a faculty teacher at the Columbia Psychoanalytic Center for Training and Research, where she is the director of the Parent-Infant Psychotherapy Training Program and assistant clinical professor in psychiatry at Columbia University. She is the chair of the IPA Committee for Child and Adolescent Psychoanalysis and a member of the New York Psychoanalytic Institute and chairs the discussion group on parent infant programs at the Psychoanalytic Institutes at the American Psychoanalytic Association meetings. She published The Process of Representation in Early Childhood, a taxon linking in parents of young disturbed children, a psychoanalytic exploration of the body in today's psychoanalysis. Please check the details of the episode to find more information about the author and to find the link to download the paper. And to stay informed about the latest podcast releases, please sign up today. On the construction of autoeroticism, at the beginning of life, The pleasure associated with its own economic balance, its object, its sources, as its goals, is a source either of essential creative system or of addictive repetition. From reading Freud, the skin ego theory, some French psychoanalysts like Michel Fin, Julia Kristeva, I would like to think aloud about the construction of auto-eroticism and of the capability for fantasizing and the down of life. Since the past 10 years, and even more during the pandemic, we are seeing patients taken by repetitive addictive behaviors. We observe how difficult it is to have them free associating, playing with representation, and how poor is their libidinal capability to develop pleasurable activities. It's in the transference that we can help the patient to recover in between sessions a capability for hallucinatory representation of the presence of the analyst. Let's think of the tiny baby buried in her unorganized body, overcome with sensations, touching her skin, op the openings of her body, staring into a face that contains her with a smile. She is immersed in a sensory universe where the mother's face, her skin, her eyes, her mouth, her smell, her warmth, and her breast with nipple fits perfectly with her lips, where everything is felt as me, myself, without differentiation between internal, external sensation in a primary identification. When this maternal part of the self is absent after having satisfied needs and pleasures, caressing on her own skin offers a child hallucinating the breast, stimulating presence. The empty mouth follows the experience of a full mouth. The sucking is associated with the fantasy of incorporating the breast. Maria Torok highlighted the role of maternal presence and the rhythm of care in the empty mouth, full mouth exchanges. The fantasy of plenitude during the mother's absence is linked with the fingers sucking that follows the breast suckling. 
forming symbolic equivalent associative games. The autoerotic oral incorporation of the breast led to a narcissistic identification passing from a relationship of being, I am the breast, to that of having it. Autoeroticism is central in Freud's theory of human sexuality. Limited satisfaction in a specific body area, autoeroticism has the only goal to provide satisfaction without the presence of an object, either self-induced sensorial activity with no links toward an object. This can be either masturbation with no representation or autoeroticism inhabited with representation of libidinally invested internal object. Like in sexual intercourse with a partner, internal object can be or not be called. The search for satisfaction can be under the imperious need for the presence of another person when there is a defect in the interiorization of love object. As Tosk wrote early in 1918, sorry, 1899, about onanism, the vicissitude in the constructing of an internal object and the insufficient psychic activity associated with it should be the cause of sexual activity, empty of representation, without the quality of sexuality that psychoanalysis means. The relationship between autoeroticism and formation of the ego has been of Freud's interest from very early on. As on 1905, he writes that the drive is not directed toward another one, but to the body ego, since the breast is felt as part of the self. It's only after the formation of a representation of a total person as the mother that the child can figure out that the breast is hers. Autoeroticism requires that an internal psychic object has been established. As Paul Denis wrote, eroticism is psychically inhabited. This is the regressive part of the drive. Cut off from psychomotor activity, from adaptation, adaptation to reality, it is a formal regression toward hallucination for a substitute satisfaction. The dream is the model of this transformation. Any deficiency in the autoerotic capability will lead to self-soothing activities associated with the need for a strict mastery over a concrete object, since this does not create any internal object of satisfaction, this has to be repeated compulsively. Look at the intense sucking of a pacifier over and over repeated associated with insomnia in infancy, the endless weighing or the pulling of the hair which try to compensate for the emptiness of the mother's absent body. Facing the lack of representation associated with erotic satisfaction, adolescents also use their own body, cutting the body, uh, using alcohol, drugs to master an invisible object. Tosk, again, wrote that only autoeroticism can allow for the ego's appropriation of sexual erotic areas in the body. Infantile sexuality and its immense variety of erotic activities is an important part of integration of the self and then eventually of the ego organization. This makes autoeroticism an interesting part of the quality of the narcissistic support for the ego. This is also the source of differentiated spaces, internal and external, and as Winnicott has discovered, of intermediate spaces. The capacity for transfer to not me object of sensuality and erotic sexuality can lead to sublimation with the pleasure taken at playing, at being aware of one's own mental activity. 
This is where psychoanalysis play its specific role at sustaining the establishment of an efficient autoerotic object that is a guarantee of independent satisfaction. This has to do with the use of the body, of experiences of pleasure while having self-preservation satisfaction, and more important, with the capacity for hallucination of an object of pleasure. Observing infant after the feeding process, the psychoanalyst, psychoanalyst Willie Hofer in the 50s uh, at the uh, Olmsted Clinic noted that all the way babies were using their fingers to maintain the oral pleasure, some playing at introducing one finger into their mouth, others using the skin to be touched and caressed, sometimes both activities at the same time. Winnicott was very grateful towards Hofer to have those very precise observations to screen the babies who were able to replay oral pleasures with calm and to differentiate them for those who were still in need for an intense arousal as if being still frustrated. The maternal function at containing is playing here its fundamental role, as it for seducing, exciting pleasure and desire. It is a dynamic containment made of contact barrier, maintaining a sustainable level of excitement that is not painful and made also of a screen for representation, a blank screen where emotions can be projected and experienced as affect inside a body ego that is inhabited. The feeling of plenitude associated with satisfaction is then owned in an intimate internal space. Erotic feelings are silently then invading that space. This is a source of an energetic matrix, as Guy Lavallee wrote. The mother's skin, her psychic attunement to her child, offer a psychic envelope that wraps the body and mind of the baby and allows for more self-discovery of what the body can provide as a source of pleasure. That combination of stimulation, containment, attunement, mirror, reciprocal pleasures depends upon the mother's unconscious infantile sexuality and on her cathexis, narcissistic as Oedipal, cathexis into that baby. She arouses, filters, offers new experiences, adjusts to the baby's capacity and development. She shares experiences. She repeats it with different modalities. She plays with rhythm and intensity. As Julia Kristeva said, the mother is a source of psychization of the biological body to make it psychic. All the sensorial sensation associated with the body and her holding create a pleasure that will be forever a source of desire. Heros can never be fully appeased, but allows for transformation from autoerotic touching of one's body into hallucination, fantasy, dreaming, all the creativity associated then with more symbolic activities. The feminine erotic and the maternal function are in a relation of exchange, opposing and transforming each other. The drive activity is a pulse that never stops, requires psychic and mental work. The violence makes the ego actively transforming energy into sexuality. The mother can have her infant as an erotic object for herself, or she can divide herself between maternal preoccupation and erotic uh, satisfaction with her partner. Her own drive activity will stimulate and resonate with the baby's one. This is a maternal reliance that Kristeva claim is a source of life as physical as mental. The mother has also to receive, to be permeable to the child's sensorial and psychic experience, as Patrick Miller pointed out. And then she has to leave the baby alone to make herself absent 
return, returning to her woman's life and creating two different kinds of mode of presence absence of sensorial stimulation and fantasy of her when away. That allows the child for the decathexis of external reality. Unconscious desire starts start from there, fully extended in the dream activity that is part of this new space, intimacy with oneself. Secondary autoeroticism must also coincide with the maternal counter-investment of a third party in the temporary disinvestment of her bond with her child. The, mo the mother goes back to be a lover, write Michel Fin and Denise Braunschweig, and the fantasy of the primal scene origin originates from there in the child. The mother's responsiveness to the infant's needs and impulses involves her own libidinal cathexis of the child through her unconscious, preconscious memory of her own childhood, associated with primitive anxiety as with Oedipal conflict. So the baby's needs are received by a benevolent mother or by a seducer or by a disgusted defensive mother. Babies can be overstimulated as they can be neglected. As André Roussillon wrote, René Roussillon wrote, early sensorial body-to-body -body contact has early maladjustment in the primitive communication convey specific messages about maternal representation. Satisfaction comes not only from discharge of the drive, but there is a relational component that the infant integrate. Think about Jean Laplanche theory. Pleasures and desires start from there. The first disappointment, misfit, inadequacy will imprint a narcissistic wound that lasts. The hungry baby can experience a satisfaction through hallucination only after receiving real satisfaction of the need and real pleasure. Then the illusion of self-sufficiency depends upon upon the mother's capacity to provide, joined with the infant capacity to receive. For Freud, hallucinatory possession of the breast amounts to investing the memory of prior satisfaction, so it becomes hallucinatorily vi very vivid. Autoerotism acts out to reproduce that satisfaction with a repetitive hope of reunion with the object. Finding, refinding the object of pleasure is a process that is replayed again and again. As Andre Green said, this is not so much the object that the infant is looking for. This is a process to get it that is a source of psychic work. Hallucinatory activity is essential during the life. Perception or presentation are the tools for that hallucination of fusion, satisfaction, and become the ground for association, displacement, transformation of pre-symbolic linking system that is the richness of the mental capacity for representation. This is the work of the Botellas. Baby would touch their lips, caress their skin, twiddle their hair, Toddlers who action their anal urethral sphincters, masturbate their genitals, all those young human beings rebuild their energetic source of feeling being themselves and attracted to love object. That is the intense background for object cassexis and later on for sublimation. The repetition of refounding the hallucinatory surge of the maternal breast presence a potentiality for hallucinating that is permanent in the psyche all along the life. Of course, there is no escape from pain or frustration or premature imposition of the reality principle. In keeping with Freud's view, we know how about the impossibility of good hallucinatory solution in case of severe deprivation. The baby responds to acute hunger is a reaction in which the whole body is involved. 
screaming with all evident sign of overwhelming anxiety if the desired breast is not forthcoming. The baby's aggression developed to the limit of its body's capacity, as John Rivier had described. The aggressive anxiety reaction is far too strong for such a weak ego. Such a bodily experience leaves its imprint onto the ego. The infant illusion of self-sufficiency, in this case of pressing self-preservative needs, depends upon the infant adaptation to an empathically available mother. At the beginning of life, the body envelope is still fragile, and maintaining the sensation and experience at being alive through movement, through action of the own body is essential. Restoring bodily dialogue is urgent. It is the economic aspect of the maternal psychic functioning that is communicated to the child in the dance of pre-verbal games. Prosody, the rhythm of the utterance, as well as a portrait, the intensity of the gaze, of the voice, are essential signals to which the baby responds with its own register of primitive drive. In analytic interventions with parents and infants, the triangulation associated with the presence of the therapist in front of a dyad or the paternal presence modifies the libidinal investment of a baby for a non-mother uh, figure who has an essential antidepressive impact by modifying the constellation of anxieties and defenses. The great models of play are organized around absence. The forda, the hide and seek, uh, are games of controlled loss. The creation of pleasure at, of all registers, the race sexualization of life, always shows an improvement into a baby uh, whose symptoms uh, can disappear very fast. This is why it's essential to intervene quickly and early when we see worrying signs in babies. The consequences of primary collapses are multiple through life, from early childhood disorder, developmental delay, attention difficulties, to serious obstacle to access Oedipal conflict, damage to adolescence, and traumatic repetition in adulthood. Autoeroticism, with its infinite potential for playing out the recreation of memories, helps to associate sensation and representation and to develop further displacement. Autoeroticism is for the subject a background onto which the imago are represented. Infantile sexuality start out from there. The effect associated with the process can change the perception since the psyche can transform, deny, neglect the external reality. The roots of the representational capacity are fully linked with the affect. In case of early trauma, violent affect will be discharged and destabilize, destabilize the psyche and its ability for representation and symbolization. Affects associate emotion nascent in the body with energetic allotment for the hallucinatory experience. The analyst work at giving meaning helps for remembrance in the patient, recreating an opportunity for some hallucinatory fantasy and pushing for more association. The primary autoerotic bodily investment builds a network of nuclear representation, source of the first object presentation, which in their turn will contain and modify them. Those nuclear representation nourish the basic material for every psychic activity. The body, in its sensory experience, both object of cathexis and drive source, is a necessary opening window to the external reality. The ind indispensable go-between of the encounter of the drive with the otherness. In psychoanalysis, the maternal is being found again 
whatever the patient's ju judgment of his maternal imagos. The libidinal recharging comes from the calling up of the erotic marks of the maternal body, which becomes, in the apreku, feminine maternal body, but now forbidden. Thank you for your attention.